In today's video, we will install a true NAS scale server inside a Proxmox server. As you can see, I am currently inside the Proxmox server. So, let's start by downloading true NAS scale. To download it, we first need to visit the true NAS scale website, which we can easily find by searching on Google. We will enter the website from the first search result on Google. On the right side, you can see the option that says continue with Google. So, we will try to log in using Google and proceed with the download. You can see two versions. One is a stable version and the other is a legacy version. We will try to download the stable version from here. So, let's proceed to download the stable version. As you can see here, the ISO file download has already started. However, I had downloaded the file earlier while preparing the video so that we can save some time. Now we will upload the downloaded ISO file to the Proxmox server. To do this, we will first select the hard disk in the Proxmox server where we want to upload the file. Then, we will select the ISO option and upload the file there. There are two ways to upload the ISO file here. First, if you have a direct download link or if you copy the link while downloading the file, you can upload it using that link. Alternatively, you can upload the ISO file stored on your hard disk by clicking the upload button, selecting the file's location and uploading it. Now, we need to patiently wait for a while until the file is fully uploaded to the Proxmox virtual server. Viewers, as you can see, the file we uploaded has now appeared in our storage. So, now we will create a virtual machine using this ISO file. At the top, you can see an icon labeled Create VM. We will use this option to create a virtual system. Now, we will give a name to this system. We will specify the location of the ISO file and select it. The system type will remain set to Linux which is a default, and all other options will remain unchanged. Just follow the steps as I demonstrate on the screen, and your system should not face any issues. In the next settings, we will proceed to the next option without making any significant changes. For advanced users, you can update the configuration as needed. However, in my opinion, there's nothing crucial here that needs to be modified. In the next option, we can see that there is an option to add hard disks or storage devices. Here, you can connect your preferred hard disk or storage device as per your requirements. In my case, I have allocated only 15 gigabytes of space for the drive where I will install TrueNAS, and I have adjusted the rest according to my needs. In my case, I am leaving everything as it is and moving to the next option because my PC's configuration doesn't require any updates. However, if you are using a computer with a better configuration, you can update the settings accordingly. In the next option, the amount of read-only memory RAM you allocate depends on how much free memory is available on your system. Since this is a multi-purpose operating system, you cannot use all the memory from your server. Therefore, allocate only as much as needed. In my case, I am allocating about 4 GB of read-only memory. In the next option, which is the network settings, there is nothing significant to configure. You can leave it as it is in the default state and proceed to the next step. In the following option, you will see that it asks you to confirm the settings. Hey, you simply need to confirm the settings and click the finish button. In the next now, the process of creating a virtual machine is complete and we will move to the console of our newly created virtual machine. So, let's go to the console and begin the next steps of the installation process from there. We can see four options. Since we want to start the installation, we will select the very first option, Install Update, to proceed. We can see three storage device options. Since we are installing the true NAS scale operating system on the storage option with the smallest allocated space, we will select the very first hard disk to proceed with the installation. In the next option, it is asking for confirmation permission. 
In this case, we will select yes and proceed to the next step. In the next step, it is asking us to set an admin password. At the top, you can see the admin user ID, which is Truina's underscore admin. Now, we will set the password. Make sure to choose a password that you can easily remember, as this password will be required later when logging into the TrueNAS panel. Now, we will first click OK, then click Yes, and wait for the system to be fully installed on the hard drive. In this case, relax and patiently wait until the installation is complete. Once the copying is complete, a dialog box will appear. You need to click OK and then reboot the system. After that, wait for a while as the system restarts. Make sure your internet router is set to dynamic IP, as this will allow the TrueNAS Scale server to automatically assign an IP address for its user interface. You can see an IP address displayed here. Using this IP address, we will log into the user interface. At this point, you will need the password that you set earlier during the server setup. As you can see, I have reached the login interface of the TrueNAS Scale server using the assigned IP address. Now, we will log into the main user control panel using the user ID and password. Right after logging in, we will see an interface like this. In this interface, we can view the status of everything, such as CPU usage, memory usage, network usage, IP address, and much more. Now, we will navigate to the storage dashboard, where we will create a storage pool. On the right side, you can see an icon label create pool. We will click on this icon and give a name to the storage pool. After this, I am selecting Stripe. In your case, you can choose mirror or RAID depending on your needs. Since I have fewer hard disks and want to use the entire disk, I am selecting Stripe. If you have more hard disks, you can select mirror or RAID for better data safety. Follow the other options as I demonstrate step by step and you will be able to create the storage pool easily without any issues. Selected two hard disks, and you plan to create two separate stripe pools for each hard disk in the same way. This approach allows you to manage the storage independently for each disk. Follow the same steps for both disks to create the individual pools. Creating the pool for the second hard disk. In this case, I will follow the same steps and options as before to create the pool. If you follow my process step by step, you will also be able to create the pools easily without any difficulty. As you can see, we have successfully created pools for both hard disks. Next, we will prepare these pools for sharing. In this case, we will select the SMB, Server Message Block, option to proceed. To begin this process, we first need to create a user. Let's start by creating a new user. For sharing purposes, we will not use our admin account. Instead, we will create a user account. This is because sharing through a user account is much easier and safer, helping to protect the main server from being hacked. If you ever need to provide a sharing ID and password to someone, always create a separate user account for them. Never share your root ID and password with anyone. We will move to the Datasets tab to start sharing the hard disks. To do this, follow these steps. Click on the Add Dataset icon within the Datasets tab. Provide a name for the dataset representing the disk. Select SMB as a dataset preset. Check the checkbox labeled Create SMB Share at the bottom. Click Save. Repeat this process for each hard disk, sharing them one by one. This will allow you to set up shares for all the disks effectively. Let's assign permissions to a user for sharing the hard disks. To do this, go to the Shares tab. From there, click on the security icon for the specific share you want to manage. This will allow you to configure user permissions for the shared disks.
now. From here, click on the Add Item option to assign specific permissions or users to the share. From here, click on the Add Item option to assign specific permissions or users to the share. In this case, you need to select User and then choose a newly created user from the list. After that, click on Save Access Control List to apply the permissions for the user. So far, we have successfully shared our disks. Now, let's try accessing them from Windows. Open the Start menu in Windows and select Run. In the Run dialog, type the IP address of the TrueNAS server using the format backslash backslash IP address and press Enter. You should now be able to access the shared disks from Windows. This will allow you to verify that the shared disks are accessible through the network. As you can now see, we are able to access the two disks we shared from Windows. In this case, we have mapped the SMB shares as network drives. Now, let's test the system by transferring a file to check the speed and verify that everything is working correctly. We can see that the file transfer is happening at a fairly good speed. Since our LAN speed is 100 megabits per second, the transfer speed is close to that, which is expected. If we had a gigabit connection, the file transfer speed would likely be around 1 gigabit per second. To further optimize the system, we need to work on improving our setup to enable faster transfers, potentially by upgrading hardware or network configurations, ensuring that the transfer speeds are as high as possible. Today, I've tried to give you an initial understanding of how to install a home NAS server and share the file system. In the future, we will demonstrate the various features of the system, how to install applications, how to access it from outside your network, and many other aspects. Each of these topics will be covered in separate videos, where we will go into detail so you can set up your home NAS smoothly without any issues. If you found our videos helpful, Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and stay with us. This will help us grow our channel and we can continue creating more valuable videos to assist you.